One question we get is, when is it time to give up? When is it time to end this marriage? When is it time to let go? I am Dr. Joe Beam. This is Kimberly Holmes, our CEO at Marriage Helper. Kimberly, I don't want to take a lot of time digging into this because of the fact that we like concentrating on helping people to save their marriages. Mm -hmm. But there is such a time when it's time to let go, right? Mm, Yes. (laughs) Okay. We're very hesitant to say that because we realize that it's the choice of the person who is standing for the marriage, wanting to save the marriage. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, I mean, and sometimes people will say, I don't want false hope. So we don't ever want to give false hope, but we have a lot of hope, real hope, positive hope to give because we've seen a lot of marriages turn around. And so this is a difficult question for me to answer because I just feel like that story of, of that hiker who was like climbing Mount Everest or something and was coming down one, like it was nighttime and he was trying to come back down and he ended up stopping because he just thought, I'm like, I'm so cold. I can't go any further. I'm just stopping. Ended up dying of hypothermia. Mm. When they found him, he was a foot from the ground, but he had given up too soon. And that's what I always think of Mm. when people ask this question, because do you ever really know what could have happened if you had hung on a little longer? But that's I get you. Their decision, I understand. Yeah. So let me start with uh, at a point where most people probably wouldn't even think we would ever begin. A few years ago when I was in California speaking, a lady approached me. Her husband had divorced her. He had already married another mm-hmm. woman. Mm-hmm. And she was asking me how I could help her get him to divorce his current wife and, and come remarry. back to her. Mm-hmm. And I told her, I, I can't conscientiously help do something like that. I mean, I admit what he did was wrong. He should have never divorced you. I I think that getting into this other relationship was not the right thing to do, Mm -hmm. but he's in it now. Mm -hmm. And I can't help destroy a marriage, or at least I won't help destroy a marriage. It's so much against my belief in value system. And so while it may sound ridiculous to hear from us, one thing we'd say is if your spouse has married somebody else, it's definitely time to give up. Now, other than that, Kimberly, I kind of work on this principle. We talk a lot about the Mm pies, physical, intellectual, emotional, spiritual. We also talk about a principle that people typically don't leave what they have unless they believe what they're going to is better. Mm -hmm. Now, it may not be better, but they believe what they're going to is better. Now, there's a version of that, in my opinion, and I'm throwing this at you kind of raw here. Uh, You haven't heard me say this before, I don't think, and I want to hear how you react to it. I believe that the same general principle applies to when is it time for me to throw in the towel? When's it time for me either to file for divorce or to sign the divorce papers already offered to me would be, okay, when you think in terms of not leaving what you have unless what you're going to is better, think in terms of pies, physical, intellectual, emotional, spiritual. We've talked about this a little bit when it comes to the valley, Mm -hmm. but let's talk about it now in terms of divorce. If you are being physically damaged, Mm -hmm. I mean, your immune system's going to pot or you gained 60 pounds and, and you're becoming unhealthy. In other words, it's beginning to affect you health wise, physically Mm -hmm. speaking, Mm -hmm. I would say it's time to start considering pulling the plug because otherwise it's going to destroy you. Or if your spouse is getting worse Mm -hmm. when it comes to physical things, we are always against any kind of spousal abuse, period. Mm -hmm. No matter how it's done, no matter how minor it may appear to be, we're totally against it. But if you find yourself in physical jeopardy, it is time to get away. It is time. Now, you may not immediately divorce. You may ask the other person, you've got to go get some help for this. And if they do, we'd be glad to help you reconcile. But physically speaking, safety. But not just for you. Safety, if you have children, for your children. Mm -hmm. And so let's say that your spouse is a pedophile and that your spouse has been abusing your children. We would say, in in Beam's opinion, my opinion, and I'll see what you think, Kimberly. I'd say you can't. You can't stay in that home mm-hmm. with those children mm-hmm. exposed to that person with that problem. Mm-hmm. Now, so physically, I look at it like there's some physical reasons when it just makes sense you have to end this. Intellectually is when you get to the point where you can't really function anymore. You can't keep your job. Uh, you get in a car to grocery store, go to the grocery store, and 10 minutes later you realize that you're on the other side of town because you, you just lost track of even being able to think. And so intellectually, or your kids, if again, you get kids living at home. And so now they were going from straight A's to D's and F's 
and and they just can't think, then it's time to, in that one, if you could reconcile, that could help the kids, obviously. But sometimes you have to make a decision. I've got to do something for the children right now. Well, emotionally the same way, spiritually the same way. Do you agree or do you think I'm off track here? I agree that if someone is not safe or if there's abuse at home or a situation, you know, akin to the pedophile example, right, that makes total sense. You have to get safe. And if there's no help, if the person who has that kind of behaviors is not going to get help and change their ways, then that's definitely a difficult decision to make uh, about ending the marriage. I mean, the decision may not be as difficult at that point, but it's the heartbreaking decision to make. Where I would question some things is more about the personal aspect. So you mentioned if they're gaining weight or losing weight or can't think clearly because they personally are being so affected. Mm -hmm. my, my caveat to that would be, have they followed the seven step plan? Have they actually tried to get calm mm -hmm. or have they just allowed the situation to take hold of them and they're falling prey to their emotions and feelings in the moment? But if someone's done the work to get calm and because of the weight of the situation or how stressful it is or how toxic it may be, it, they just, there's no amount of getting calm they can do to offset right. the, the a lack of calmness of the other person, then yes, I would agree in that situation. That's a good balanced view of that. I think that's said much better than what I said. But remember this sen uh, sense of people don't leave what they have unless they believe auditory is better. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes you'll run into a woman who maybe is 30 years old. Mm -hmm. Her husband's been gone four years. Mm -hmm. he's been living with this other woman. He didn't marry her, but he's been living with this other woman for four years mm -hmm. or three and a half years or something. Mm -hmm. And here this woman is thinking, I'm going to stay here just like I am until he finally comes back. Mm -hmm. And and she wants to have children, but mm -hmm. her clock is ticking. She wants to have emotional fulfillment and sexual fulfillment. Mm -hmm. How long does a person wait oh, gosh. Without, without causing themselves to really be resentful mm -hmm. of everything that they lost. Yeah. And so, again, uh, I'm very anti-divorce. I'm very mm -hmm. pro-marriage. But if your spouse has been gone for years and won't pay any attention to you whatsoever, right. and, and you find yourself being tempted to go beyond your belief and value system to, to fulfill your own sexual drive, for example, mm -hmm. then, then, well, I'm a, I'm a Christian, so I'll just quote a verse here. There's a passage in 1 Corinthians chapter 7 that basically says that it's better to get married than, than to let lust control your life. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes I would think, okay, that's, that's enough reason here. You're going to wind up doing things where you're going to dislike yourself. You're going to wind up doing things so in contradiction to your beliefs and values. You're going to become a different person, mm -hmm. a person that you don't like. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, it may be time now to give up waiting on the other person. Now, people who know our story know that I divorced your mother. I was gone for three years. And when I came, well, except I saw the children every other weekend, but you know what I'm saying? Um, she finally moved on with her life. Mm -hmm. When we were divorced, I divorced her. She finally decided, she signed the papers and all that kind of stuff. And she started dating and that kind of thing. But by the grace of God, when finally I came to my senses, she took me back. Mm -hmm. And so the fact of divorcing does not necessarily mean that the curtain is closed forever. Mm -hmm. Can you move on with your life? And still, if your spouse comes to his or her senses and comes back, can you still at that point put it back together? We've helped people do it numerous times. Right. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there was a previous client we've had who it's a similar situation, except he's, he's the man and his wife just continued to follow a beliefs and value system that was so different from who she used to be. And it wasn't just that, but mentally she began to kind of decline to where mm. she became more involved with drugs, more involved with different things, couldn't even take care of the kids anymore. He ended mm. up getting full custody. And so with two years of that decline and he did. And so the other part I would ask here for people to ask themselves is to ask, have I done everything that I can do to try mm -hmm. and save it? Mm -hmm. And this guy absolutely did. I mean, he absolutely did do everything that he could. And she continued to make her choices and to decline. And so ultimately for him, again, like mid-30s, 
maybe wants to have more kids, but there's a lot of life in front of him. How long is he going to sit around and wait for her to come back when there is no evidence for two years of her making any turn, any positive turn back in the right direction? And so, again, that's the hard decision he decided to make. I will. I'm going to move forward with the divorce and I'm going to move forward. And then even after the divorce, he waited for about a year and then ultimately said, I'm ready to start dating again. But it was it was never reactive. It was always thoughtfully, prayerfully considered mm-hmm. of Good. what what do I have peace with, ultimate peace with for me and for my kids. And that's where he is now. And I, I believe his next marriage is going to be great mm-hmm. because of how thoughtful and intentional yes. he was in go. that one. You want to be able to, to sleep at night with, uh, with innocence. Mm-hmm. Several years ago, I worked with a couple, and with each visit, their animosity increased and, and their anger and hatred toward each other increased mm. until finally one day they just looked at me and, and both were just in, full of vitriol at the time. And he, I think it was he that asked the question, what do you think is going to happen next? And I said, I think that one of you is going to die. Based on what I've seen this escalating, I'm not God. I cannot predict the future. But based on the escalation I've seen and how it continues to get worse, I think one of you is going to definitely hurt the other probably to the point of death. Mm. And... They said, then what will you recommend? Well, it's your choice. But I don't think that you're called to die. That, that safety. Mm-hmm. Safety, physically, intellectually, emotionally, spiritually, is a big, big deal. Mm-hmm. And so I guess our point here is this. It's a hard decision. It is a hard decision. The, yes. So the point is, it's a hard decision to make. And so in making the decision, you should... Do a lot of thinking, seek wise counsel, not just people who are going to side with you, but professional counsel, Uh, maybe have a coach work with you through it. Ask yourself, have I done all of the things that I can do? Have I used every tool at my disposal to try and turn this marriage around? But that's the key. It shouldn't be a reactive decision of when to give up. It should be a well-intentionally thought through decision. Excellent. So we wish you well, and we wish you wisdom. If you're a praying person, pray for wisdom. It's not an easy decision to make, but unfortunately, sometimes a necessary decision. We appreciate you being part of Relationship Radio. We have many more episodes to come. Come back and join us again.